Welcome to Fleet Commander Pacific. For ease of access, today I'm going to actually be showing you the game and how to play it uh, with a hot seat game. So we're going to be playing as both the Japanese and the Allies, just so you guys kind of understand exactly what's going on. Now, as you can see, there are a number of different scenarios we can go for, and this game is in early access, so there will be more scenarios to come. Um, however, we are going to jump into the Coral Sea scenario today, and it's a very, very short, fast scenario to sort of get you acclimated to the game, and I hope we can show you some important tips. So the initial fleet commander turn, and of course the way this game works is alternating turns. We've got two different actual kinds of units, well more than two, but let's just specify the two most important ones, and those are air flotillas and naval units. Now both air flotilla and naval units can control victory points. So let's go ahead. We are simply going to accept our air flotillas, uh, both for the Allies and for the Japanese. And we're going to start here with the Japanese side. If we take a look at these regions over here, you sort of looks like sort of hexes. These regions denote victory points, and of course, each region has a different victory point, um, you know, bonus or uh, or advantage, etc. I believe this region over here in the Coral Sea is about three victory points, whereas these subsequent regions are two each. Now we've got a patrol stage, and this is of course the first stage. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take a look here at the units. It's important to note one thing, and that is that not every single one of these units are out to sea. Some of the units that you see in this stack are actually in the naval base over here at Lai. So we want to make sure that if we're sending units out, um, well, that we're not, you know, intentionally sending out units that are actually still in the base over here. Um, so for instance, if we take this unit, we see these five units, as you can see near base island base lay. And if I just go ahead and click, for instance, the Kako, and let's also click the Shoho, this is one of our aircraft carriers. Well, then as you can see, they actually separate um, and sort of become either a new group or actually some of them simply go back to port. So let's click again at the, um, oh, sorry, wrong ship. Let's go back here. Let's clip a, click again on the um, Haguro. And as you can see over here, this is split this other group into two separate groups as well. Now, let's say we want to go ahead and merge them together. We just simply click. So as you can see, click one away, click two away. We've got two separate groups. And of course, if you want to do that, you can. But if you want them together, you simply click again, and they're all merged together. Now. To control the victory points that are available in these areas, you can use either naval units or you can use air fleet units. However, some of our naval units are patrol units, um, or excuse me, raider units. Now, raider units cannot actually take a victory point zone, and the reason is because they are going to leave and they are going to return back to their port so that victory point will be open. No, we need to take an actual fleet, and we can do that with the patrol ability. We're going to go ahead, eye, eyes over the Coral Sea here, and I'm just going to left click. And as you can see, I'm sending this fleet up here, the one that we had at the Mayolotep area. And so this is quite a strong fleet with the Haguro, the Mayoko, the Shukaku, and the Zuikaku. And if we actually just take a look at those, we can mouse over them and get additional information uh, about all of these different ships. I'm also going to jump over here to this task force, and you know what? I am going to bring them over here as well, with a little bit of a change, and that is I am going to leave that ship there, and I'm going to leave the Kako here, because I want some ships left behind to defend this zone from the enemy. So let's go ahead and, oh, my apologies, let's leave the Kagoose. I want to bring all of my carriers and the Kako. There we go. So we're going to leave those two back there, and these will naturally merge with our existing fleet. And hopefully, this fleet is going to stand up to whatever the allies send at us. As you can see over here, and we're going to touch on that in the land-based air movement phase, but we also have some invading forces, the MAR Kude. Um, the way it works in this game, to be very simple about it, and I, we're not going to go deep into land combat during this video, but essentially, if the, the allies at Port Moresby, number one, we would have to control this sea zone. 
Number two, the Allies at Port Moresby, let's say they had one unit. In this case, they have no units. We would simply attack and we would take it. Essentially, one unit would cancel out one of the enemy's unit units. So if you had nobody there, then one unit would capture, but also be canceled out. I hope that makes sense. Um, and again, this particular scenario really doesn't have much in the land movement phase, so we're not going to worry about it too much. Now, I'm pretty much done with patrols. It's important to mention, though, that there are two different kinds of battles. Um, there are night battles and there are day battles. And determining or depending on when you send out your patrols or what your patrols consist of, uh, that is going to be something you want to consider. In fact, if you want to, you can use this bottom screen right here to kind of just look through your air groups, look through your battleship groups, etc., and get an idea of, you know, what's going where, who's where, etc. Um, so I'm going to take a look here. I can also filter out all Japanese units, and I am going to click Done. Now, of course, we are turning over to the Allied uh, Commander, and he's got this massive, massive fleet here. Um, quite a few CVs as well in this fleet. And I would think as the Allied commander, the most important thing would be to destroy this Japanese fleet. And here's the interesting thing, is if we look over here, we've also got a task force. Um, now, I think it's really important to mention this. If you guys um, look at the symbols above these different fleets, or actually, it's more appropriate to call this a diamond, not a triangle. But this diamond is a raiding ship. And what did we learn about raiding ships initially? These cannot control sea zones. The raiding ships can simply come out, assist in a particular battle, and then they will return to their respective ports. So let's take that big American group. I know I went back on a turn because I wanted to show you guys the raiding aspect here. Uh, and let's send them all into this area for the attack. In fact, wait a minute, wait a minute. There we go. Um, let's do that. And this is going to ultimately lead to a pretty massive battle, but we've got a slight advantage here. And that is that over here in Australia, we've got two additional ships. Uh, we are going to move them to join this group. And now, as you can see, well, we've got a much bigger fleet than the Japanese have. Um, or at least it looks like a somewhat bigger fleet, though we have to keep in mind that they do have those beautiful carriers. They might actually have more carriers than we do. Now we're doing the land-based air movement phase, guys. And I'm looking over here to see if we have any additional um, aerial units. We don't. However, we've got these flotillas right here. Um, the thing about the flotillas, you can only drop the flotillas into um, basically regions that you control. So we're going to put one of them right there. As you can see, he's flying onto the map. And now the Allies get a chance to drop one of their flotillas. Well, we've got a naval air fleet here. You can see the air power is two. And we've got another air fleet over here. I should also mention, if you look at those air fleets and you see the black background, uh, that's a basic air fleet. This also goes for naval units. But if you see a white background instead of a black background, that's a plus one to the unit. I don't want to call it an elite unit, but let's just say it's a veteran unit. So again, with this particular unit, let's take it, and I am going to drop him, actually try to cause a little chaos, because both us and the Japanese um, actually have um, cities or ports in this particular area. So I'm going to try and provide some additional air support here. Nope, nope, I was wrong. Nope, we did get him in, never mind. Uh, once again, time for the Japanese to send in their units, and I'm actually going to have one of the units here. And here's why, guys. One cool thing about this game is that whether it's an air fleet or a naval fleet, as long as it's not a raiding fleet, it can capture this area. So if we're the only unit over here in the Marshall Islands and we just have this air flotilla, that's enough for us to take control of the region. Let's go ahead and drop another allied fleet. And I'm going to throw them over here because I want to get as many bonuses as I can for the battle. Um, now, this Mar Kure, this is the infantry uh, detachment we were talking about. Um, and of course, if we were, you know, attacking the Allies, uh, we would probably go for something like Guadalcanal over here, or maybe even go for Port Moresby. But for that to happen, we need to actually control the area. Um, and I think what I'm going to do here is just simply either send them back to port there, which is an option, or just kind of keep them out here. 
Um, now, here's the other thing, is if he gets in a battle, like let's say um, an American naval unit comes over here and starts fighting them, um, they'll have to destroy these ships before they try and destroy our troop carrier. Again, though, in this particular fight, the troop carrier is not going to really be of much importance. So there we go. Now we get into the raiding phase, and this is one opportunity to really get in here and change the courses of certain battles. Basically, the raiding phase is your last chance at maybe throwing a wrench in the works and saving existing fleets or making some last-minute moves. Now, what I'm doing over here, I wouldn't necessarily recommend anybody do. Um, and of course, since this is a hot seat game, I kind of control what's going on anyway. Um, but basically, what I'm going to do is I am going to move these units over here to merge with this large fleet so that we stand a chance against that massive American fleet in the Coral Sea. The reason this is not a wise move and not something I recommend you guys do is this leaves the South Pacific Ocean area pretty much completely unguarded. Um, so if we do that, we do still have some air fleets here. And again, they can defend the area, but for all intents and purposes, we're leaving this area unguarded. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and can we launch a raid? Yes, we can. Beautiful. Now the submarine phase, this is another way to add in a little bit of a modifier um, for our side. Now this is of course for the Japanese. We're going to click that sub and we are going to add it. That's right. To this group and look at that guys the submarine is going to move through and it's actually going through two tiles um, which is quite interesting so two separate tiles there um, just to reach this area and the reason I mentioned that is there is a speed factor in this game and so most units can really only clear one tile and let me just put it this way um, if you take a look at the ships here oh we're actually in the battle so let's jump into that here um, so I can show you guys this aspect of the game um, but I think it's important to mention that most ships have a different movement ranking, fast, slow, medium, etc. Um, a fast ship can usually move two tiles, no problem. But if you've got a slow ship and he's part of a fleet and you move more than one tile, there is a chance that your ship is not going to be able to make it to that tile that turn. With that being said, let's jump into our battle video. Now, the battle part of the game is absolutely one of my favorite parts of the entire game. The way it works is like this. So, number one, we have to determine who holds this sea zone. In this case, the Americans own the sea zone, which means they get a plus one bonus um, in this battle. And they also get to choose initially whether they're going to go for a surface or an air attack. Now, don't worry, the Japanese player is going to be able to respond to this as well, because, of course, the surface and the air attack have their own positives and negatives. If we look over some of our ships, by the way, um, the cruisers, for instance, they have air power there. They are going to be able to add to overall air attack, and that's certainly very beneficial. In fact, if we look over here at our air group, they're also going to be able to add an air attack. We can't currently mouse over them, um, but they're also going to have their own air power. Um, and that's decent. The problem is, just look around here, these other guys are all surface attack ships. So the cruisers are all going to be surface attack ships. We have to look at the Japanese side, and as we can see, the Japanese have three aircraft carriers, which as far as I can tell means that the Japanese absolutely would have a, an advantage in an air attack situation. They also have a ship back here, a submarine, that is, I believe, going to be part of the air attack as well. Um, this Because the air attack isn't just air attack. Um, it's basically any units that can get in here that have air units. Although the submarine might come in a little bit later, I think. In any case, let me show you guys what happens. So obviously, as the American player, I want to go for the surface attack. Because I know the Japanese have more air units. And let's be the Japanese, they're going to go for the air attack. Well, what happens now? So see, now they actually start to roll, and the player that wins the roll gets to determine what happens here. They also have an aerial bonus, the Japanese do, so they get plus one in the air. Let's start that aerial attack. And look at that, guys. I was right. The submarine moves in here, and so do our aircraft carriers. And we want to look at the firepower there. They each have firepower of one, which means they each get about one attack. Another very important thing is if you look at those green bars underneath the ship, that lets us know the health points of each individual ship. 
Well, if you're anything like me, you want to get rid of the enemy's cruisers quickly. Of course, it's much more important for the Americans to get rid of the Japanese cruisers than the other way around, especially when you look at the mountain, um, uh, uh, excuse me, carriers, especially when you look at the mountain of enemy cruisers here. But going for those carriers is going to help us out quite a bit. So what am I going to do? I get four attacks, right? So one attack, that's my first carrier. Second attack, that's my second carrier. Third attack, I am going to go for their other carrier, the Yorktown. And we actually get an additional attack. Let's hit the Yorktown again. That's our torpedo. Now, there we go. We got a hit on the Lexington. And this is the way it works. So, pretty nice hits. Guys, we got kills on both of these ships. When you see fire on board, what that means is that the ship is going down. It's on fire. It's about to sink. It does get, however, one final salvo before going down. So if I were playing as the American player, of course, I'm going to go for the Shokaku. In fact, I'll throw everything at the Shokaku uh, except for my 11th Air Force. And I'm going to have him attack the other enemy character, uh, the other enemy carrier, I should say, <laughs> the Zuikaku. Let's see how it goes. Oh, nice. We did get a hit. We did get a hit. Hey, we just traded. Well, we traded two carriers for one. And as you can see, two carriers go down on our side. One carrier goes down on the Japanese side. The battle still rages on. But that just goes to show you how vicious those initial blows can be. And the battle is continuing. So let's take a look here. Um, hmm. Surface or air attack. And now it's starting to get a little more even. Actually, it's still very beneficial for the Japanese to go for the air attack. So I am going to choose that air attack. And the enemy is going to choose surface attack. And we win once again. By the way, at any point during this battle, either side can go ahead and retreat and save the rest of their naval forces. Which is definitely something you're going to want to consider once a battle really starts to go out of favor for you. In this case, I still think that the battle could be won by either side, although this does complicate things. Now, I'm going for that air attack, but what do I want to do in this air attack phase? Well, they've only got one air unit, right? And that is going to be the 11th Air Force. Can we go ahead and take him down? Well, at least we tried. But of course, getting rid of that unit would mean that the enemy has nothing in terms of air attack. Of course, we got our turn with air attack, and so do the allies. And of course, as the allied player, I would absolutely go for that already damaged Zuikaku. Another thing that's interesting, not only is it damaged when we look at the health bars, but the speed is also quite poor because it's already been hit and damaged before. So here we go. Oh, missed with both attacks. That's no fun, but it's going to happen to the best of us, unfortunately. So again, with that plus one as the owner, we're going to go again with the surface attack. And this time, once again, the Japanese would naturally go for that air attack, just because they're not going to come out on top with the surface ships. That being said, we're going to do an air attack followed by a surface attack since we both matched up and all we've got here is the shoho now typically at this point i would really think the japanese player would essentially retreat uh but that's not the case here so with the shoho let's try to hit the astoria here and actually did get a lucky hit two hits which means that ship is destroyed but once again it gets one last opportunity to fire before sinking and of course with the air units now that we're playing as the allies with the 11th air force i am going to hit those japanese carriers that is the biggest threat and i want to see if any of them are damaged now this one only has one hit point and this one has three hits i want to go for this one and see if we can't knock him out for good unfortunately we missed both attacks and of course the fight continues now it's time for the japanese player to return fire and what are we going to do i'm just going to go for a good old-fashioned broadside you can select whichever ships you want here for the shot um so i am going to just trade volleys with all of the enemy ships look at that we got a hit another hit some of these are kills guys unbelievable we came out with a dramatic conclusion there now it's the american turn and like i said even if your ship is sinking you still have one shot left and it looks like all three of these ships are sinking and this one over here the portland is badly damaged we're simply going to return that volley why not right i suspect the american player would probably do something very similar 
And again, without a doubt, Japan comes out on top. They do have two damaged ships, but that's about it. Now, as the American player, of course, you would want to retreat at this point. Um, as the Japanese player, you're going to want to go for your air attack, likely. You could go for surface, now that the enemy doesn't have much. Uh, but the air attack allows us to use those carriers. So let's go with the air pursuit and see if we can't take out the Chester before he gets away. There we go, one final attack. We did get a kill. Actually, I think it's just a hit. He's going to get away. And what happens with a ship that's damaged is they are going to return to port and, of course, start to repair. Now, um... I think he saw that in the left corner of the screen. One beautiful thing there is that at the, or even during the battle, you're going to get a play-by-play -play of everything that's occurring. All the ships that are taking hits, all the ships that are sinking, etc., etc. Now, of course, what we need to do is we need to retreat the patrol ships, uh, the raiding ships, to appropriate uh, docks. So I'm going to send them here to Lei. Let's go ahead and do that. In fact, we'll grab this fellow here. And send him to Lei. There we go. And we also have to retreat the Americans now. So we're going to take them. And we'll send him to Spiritu Santo. Nope, that's not an option. What about... Let's go to Guadalcanal. So at least we'll still have some units here in Guadalcanal just in case. Now again, don't think that just because we've got units here at the dock that we control this sea zone. We don't. The Japanese clearly are in control of the South Pacific sea zone, um, so we can't necessarily get excited about that. Now, once again, this task force, the Zukaku, uh, we're going to go ahead and have to move him back. Actually, we can go for air raids here. Uh, I think we're going to stay put. It is an air raid phase, but we can't go for Australia or anything like that. Um, let's just go ahead and uh, end that one. Let's take a quick look. So actually, I wasn't aware of this, but interestingly enough, uh, we may launch two rounds of air raids by carrier planes over basis of the adjacent sea area. That is pretty awesome and news to me. So let's go, at, uh, go ahead and take the Zukaku. That's our carrier, and oh boy, I'm not so sure I want to follow up with these air raids. Um, and it looks like the Zukaku, yeah, he doesn't want to follow up with that either. Uh, of course, it looks like we might have another battle out here. Let's take a look. And sure enough, we do have a small air fleet battle between us and the Americans. I'm going to go for it. Let's go ahead and get started. Uh, the Americans, it looks like, we'll go ahead and select an attack. Select an attack right back here. And maybe, potentially, that we can't... Oh, there we go. We need to select the kind of battle. I'm simply going to select air attack this time and have them go ahead and agree. Now, this would not necessarily happen in an actual fight, of course. Um, but we're trying to simplify things. This, of course, is important, though, to mention. Because the thing about air fleets is that, much like the, um, the standard fleets that you have on the actual ocean, the air fleets can control territory. That's right. The air fleets can actually control a sea zone and subsequently get you those victory points you need for a victory. So just something to keep in mind. Um, you know, don't completely dismiss them. There we go. Finally, the Japanese seem to have gotten a nice hit there. Is he going down? No, I think he's still got some fights left in him. But look at this final air attack for the last battle. All right, we're going to have both units retreat here. I am curious to see kind of what happens um, after everything is said and done here. And again, with this Coral Sea scenario, um, it's really just a question of essentially um, one, you know, one turn, that's it. Uh, you don't really have to worry much about doing multiple turns, but as the game comes to fruition, you will have that opportunity. Let's see, where can we retreat? Can we retreat with these Americans? Yeah, we can go to Guadalcanal. That's about as close as we're going to get. Now we are going for our raiders. And again, like I said before, your raiders cannot capture territory. So all we can really do with the raiders is basically return them uh, to their respective ports. Now, it's important to mention that when it comes to the ports in this game, if you're Japanese um, and you're landing in Japanese territory, I believe the repair is three points every turn. If you're landing in Australia, it's only one point every turn. Um, so make of that what you will. It just seems that simply the Japanese ports are a little more prepared for repairs. 
Now, that doesn't mean you can't get good repairs as the allies, because, of course, you can go to places like Guadalcanal, Spiritu Santo, etc. So there we go, guys. And as you can see, the Japanese are up by three victory points. Now, the patrols return. We're going to go ahead and select that patrol, and I am going to drop him right in. Actually, let's send him over here to Mayalop. Uh, the only reason I'm doing this is just to make absolutely sure that the Allies don't retake it. And there we go. That is a Japanese victory. One amazing thing about the end of the game here, we can actually look at the game logs, and we can see everything that occurred during this entire campaign, which I think is just such a nice touch. Um, there's so much information here, including even repair information. I think really the only thing that I would like to add is maybe like crew losses for each side. That would be pretty awesome. Nonetheless, guys, I hope this was helpful to you, and I hope you enjoyed this video, uh, and I'll catch you in the next one. Make sure to pick up Fleet Commander today.